Well, hello everyone. Good evening and welcome to this January 25th meeting of the City Council. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Would you all please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman Sonoika and Alderman Budmatz are unable to physically attend tonight's meeting. Mikhail. Here. O'Brien. Here. Veneziano. Here. Bassesi. Here. Reyes. Here. With five physically present, we have a quorum this evening. And with that, we have Alderman Sonoika, who has notified the city manager that she's unable to physically attend tonight's meeting due to her own illness and has requested to attend the meeting remotely. It's been determined that Alderman Sonoika meets the qualifications for remote attendance under Section 2-114 of the City Code. And as such, at this time, I'd like to call for a motion and permit Alderman Sonoika to attend the meeting remotely. Is there such a motion? So mm -hmm. Thank you, Alderman McHale, and thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the bud man. Er, <laughs> I got a lot going on in my brain right now. <laughs> and thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for that. Um, we're going to have to call the vote on this, correct? Correct. All right. Correct. Will the clerk please call the vote? Okay. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. McHale. Yes. With five in favor and none opposed, the motion carries. <coughs> Now, are you going to call for uh, Alderman Sonoika's attendance at this time? No. The clerk, no? No. I no. just said Alderman Sonoika is remotely present at this for this meeting. Okay. Then this will bring us on to the next attendee that's attending remotely this evening, and that's Alderman Budmatz, who has notified the city manager that he is unable to physically attend tonight's meeting due to his exposure to COVID-19 and has requested to attend the meeting remotely. It has been determined that Alderman Budmatz meets the qualifications for remote attendance under Section 2-114 of the City Code. And as such, at this time, I'd like to call for a motion to permit Alderman Budmatz to attend the meeting remotely. Is there such a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Veneziano. Thank you, Alderman Bassesi, for the second. Would the clerk please call the roll? Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. McHale. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. That's five in favor, zero opposed. Alderman Budmatz is remotely present for this meeting. Well, thereafter, Alderman Sonoika and Alderman Budmatz will be able to participate in the meeting in the same capacity as those members who are physically present with us and will be called and counted on for any vote taken during the meeting. I'd like to remind members of the audience at this time that these proceedings are being recorded for current and future broadcasts over the city's cable television channel, as well as other media outlets. The first order of business is to approve minutes from a previous meeting, and that's the January 11th City Council meeting. Is there a motion to approve this set of minutes? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Thank you, Alderman McHale, for the first, and Alderman Bassesi for the second. Are there any corrections, additions, or deletions to this set of minutes? Seeing none, the question is, shall the minutes be approved? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Aye. The ayes have it and the minutes are approved. This brings us to the next section of this evening's agenda, which is the mayor's report. And for this evening's mayor's report, I do want to address the subject of in-person meetings. Throughout the course of this pandemic, I've tried to keep the subject of COVID-19 non-controversial and mainly focused on policy that beneficially impacts the city, specifically not trying to politicize the situation and by politicizing it, I mean use the virus to create discord or divide our decisions and behaviors on the council. As the mayor, I've simply tried to take measures that I believed were responsible, practical, and in the best interest of all. I understand that there's recently been a level of concern over holding in-person meetings by two members of the city council. This was initiated publicly on January 11th and has since carried on. As I address my position on the matter, I believe it's important that everyone hear it simultaneously and for one time this year. Before proceeding though, I wanna put it in perspective. In March of 2020, I called a special meeting to declare a state of emergency for the city of Rolling Meadows. The subsequent meeting that we held thereafter on March 24th of 2020 was arguably the first, if not one of the first as a community to conduct the meetings in a virtual manner. 
We continued our virtual meetings until May 25th of 2021. And that's because I've always been an advocate for technology and promoted the use of solutions available that allow us to maintain continuity of operations. During those 15 months of virtual meetings, I also said that I would conduct those, those meetings based on the level of safety felt by the least secure member of the city council. To that point, I'd like to make clear that where we are today with this pandemic is not the same as the pandemic of that time frame when I made the statement. Vaccine administration to the U.S. residents was in its infancy with the first emergency use authorization by the FDA on December 11th of 2020. It wasn't until March 18th of 2021 when this country was promised another 100 million vaccines in 100 days. The situation that kept us in virtual meeting environments at that time is not the same as our situation today. For the members of the City Council that prefer to go back to meeting virtually, while the remaining members are comfortable and prefer continuing to hold meetings in person, I will not revert to virtual meetings by making the determination that in-person meetings are not practical or prudent just for peace of mind. I don't agree in going in that direction, and I believe it sends the wrong message to the community. By me saying that we need to meet virtually, it also says that we should not be anywhere else in public either. But I understand that we're volunteering our time, and if the level of anxiety over these in-person meetings are disruptive to your personal or professional lives, I also understand you have to strike a balance. In England, they've decided to drop masks and COVID passports and treat COVID like any other illness, staying at home if you're sick. In Australia, arguably the strictest continent and nation state government with the highest vaccination rate recently opened their borders to more than 23,000 backpackers, encouraging them to travel and join their labor force while they're there. More importantly at home, we're telling our children to remain in person at school and they will not go back to virtual learning, even though they're enduring the same statistics some might use to justify our virtual direction here. Our children are confined in small rooms with large class sizes. They wear masks, they sit close together, and have to unmask for lunch, which many eat in the same classroom communally. Additionally, our neighboring communities are continuing to hold in-person meetings at this time, in some cases unmasked, and nonetheless with the public in the same room. Now, I'm not condoning, condemning, or comparing ourselves to others or our neighbors, but because I'm speaking entirely about in-person meetings versus virtual meetings in our city council, I want to remind everyone what I said on January 11th about the safety of our environment. This room is cleaned prior to our arrival and also after we leave. We have ultraviolet filtration in our HVAC systems. We're spaced far apart from one another. We don't allow members of the public to share the space with us at this time. We wear masks and we don't touch one another's devices or documents to avoid cross-contamination or possible infection. We also have plexiglass dividers available should the council want to use them. In reality, people are far more likely to contract COVID outside of this environment during their regular and ordinary activities than they are to catch COVID in here and leave with it. Though it's possible, it's not probable, and we cannot exist in hypotheticals thinking about what if we do catch it here. Under Section 7E of the Illinois Open Meeting Act, it identifies the mayor as the sole decision maker who determines whether it's practical or prudent to conduct meetings in person or virtually. Based on my position and the knowledge that the majority of the council prefer to continue meeting in person, this is how we will remain to do it. Now I empathize with those who disagree, but the seven day positivity rate has ultimately declined and we can presume that during the month of February, the positivity rates will continue to portray the same downward trend, thus allowing our peers a time frame to get comfortable knowing that we're continuing with in-person meetings. Another thing to remember, which I've long since said, is that we, we assume these roles as elected officials. We had to forfeit our individual wants and needs because we now represent a broader set of needs and that's those of our constituents. As we move forward, if there's still individual reluctance by a member of the City Council to return, it's going to be up to the individual to figure out how they meet the demands of representing their ward. If they're ill or meet the other criteria, we have a mechanism in place that allows their remote participation. We have an obligation to be available to our residents in this setting. I understand that we maintain communications with our residents while meeting virtually, but we're not able to be available to them in that capacity. This leads me to two final points that I want to address. Last week, I provided Manager Sabo with advance notice during his and my weekly manager meeting that the City Council will need to initiate determination on when, in the near future, that we will sunset our state of emergency for the City of Rolling Meadows. The reason being is that because our state of emergency locally no longer affords us anything more advantageous than what we can receive under the state's state of emergency. The second item has to do with evolving based on lessons we've learned and continuing to learn throughout the course of this pandemic. Item number two is our local ordinance 1943, attendance at meetings by means other than physical presence or remote attendance, 
which was adopted in October of 2019 and can be found in the city's code of ordinances in section 2-114 enabling remote or telephonic attendance to the city's meetings by up to two members of the city council. This ordinance was originally conceived and adopted prior to the pandemic under the premise that an individual is presented from physically attending under certain conditions even though they wanted to engage in these meetings. The composition of that ordinance never had in mind the constraints that we face through the course of this pandemic. To that point, the City Council is going to have to revisit this ordinance and evaluate what we can do technologically within the boundaries we're allowed for holding City Council meetings that offers a flexible hybrid approach and affords a certain number of members the ability to attend remotely if necessary, but attend more than telephonically while providing a seamless, well-conducted meeting for those participating and anybody watching. As I conclude these remarks, please know I'm not trying to incite a debate that attempts to refute or rebut any, any decision that I'm trying to keep in-person meetings moving forward. I'm well aware that a debate on this topic can go in circles. I'm not attempting to convince or persuade anyone to change their mind, nor am I looking to be convinced or persuaded either. I understand this topic is sensitive, but what everyone needs to understand is the following three things. First, it's my decision at this time to keep our meetings in person. Two, we have to consider sunsetting our local state of emergency. And third, we have to reevaluate our existing remote attendance ordinance so it meets the demands of the future. We have to do this because we don't know what the future holds, but we know we need to keep moving forward because that's the only direction we should all be interested in going is forward. With that, are there any ward reports this evening? Alderman Veneziano. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So from uh, fourth ward, I know we've um, brought this up before um, with the congestion and the traffic over by Rolling Meadows High School on, Cur on uh, Central J um, over there. So we've had some uh, complaints again about a lot of traffic over there. I did speak to manager um, Sabo about this to continue working um, with PD and community development and then the school resources as well um, to see, you know, with working with the school if there's some other um, solutions to this problem so I, I did hear those residents and in, in light of you know the situation that happened this past week um, it is on our radar and we are working on that on that problem thank you thank you Alderman Veneziano Alderman McHale yes um, last week on uh, January 17th the uh, weather siren in Ward 1 went off and mal malfunctioned that day and uh, I discussed it with manager Sabo and if you don't mind Mr. Mayor I would like him to give us a little recap and update of that situation? Please. Sure. I'd be happy to. Thank you, Alderman McHale. Uh, that is correct. We did have a malfunction of a weather siren in the Green Meadow Court area. Uh, the uh, city staff responded to that siren as soon as we were reported of it. It turns out there is a battery backup system. So the, the, the setup of the siren is such that there is a hardwired electric service to the siren, but in the event of a power failure, power outage during a storm, there's a battery backup. That battery backup ended up shorting, and it ended up shorting out the, the control panel of the actual siren, which resulted in it going off. Um, that has been repaired, so as soon as we discovered that issue, um, we brought in a contractor, repaired that, and it is completely functional, has been restored, and will be on the regular testing cycle, which is the first Tuesday of each month. I also just want to note that we have in our capital improvement plan a replacement of that siren. It is reaching the end of its, its useful life, but it does continue to remain functional and has been repaired and restored. I just want to um, clarify that these sirens don't typically go off just willy-nilly, so if you hear a siren, it's better to heed warning and uh, make sure that everything's okay. Yep. Thank yep. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman McHale. Uh, are there any other ward reports this evening? Yes, ward report for Ward 7. Alderman Sanoika, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so yesterday at 11.40 p.m., police officers responded to the Stadium Sports Club at the 4,000 block of Algonquin Road um, and in reference to shots fired at the bar area. When those seeing officers were able to locate three males who had received apparent gunshot wounds, and the shooting stuff from a physical alter altercation between the patrons. Uh, the investigation into this incident is still ongoing. One individual, a 33-year-old male from Forest Park, Illinois, is currently in police custody. He has sustained an injury to his hand during the altercation and subsequent shooting. The person currently in custody was the individual who allegedly fired a gun that struck the 38-year-old male from Des Plaines, Illinois, in the Aspen. 
The victim struck in the abdomen of the critical condition and is being treated at Lutheran General Hospital. Second victim, a 26-year-old male from Elgin, Illinois, was struck in the leg by a bullet during this incident. This individual was treated and has since been released from the hospital. Uh, a huge thank you to the officers and the bar management for de-escalating the situation and keeping the injuries to what they were for this incident yesterday. Um, I will continue to work with the city staff and Police Chief Nowacki as additional details unfold. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sonoyka. That's unfortunate news. Thank you to our police department for your quick response and EMS. This now brings us to opening the floor to members of the public for 20 minutes. And I will wait for the clerk to see if there are signatures on the sign-in sheet. Okay, do you know which item they're available for? The electric sign. <clears throat> All right, so I understand that there is an individual, Mr. Jeff Barmeller, Bar excuse me, if I don't get that right. He is available for the electric sign. Should there be any questions or conversation on this matter when we arrive at it? And at that time, we can make a motion to deviate if necessary. But until then, we'll continue on to items pending. Beginning with line item A, ordinance number 22-04, approve an ordinance confirming and extending the state of emergency within the city of Rolling Meadows due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Thank you, Alderman mm -hmm. Sonoy, er, Alderman Veneziano, <laughs> we switched seats this time, <laughs> and Alderman Bassesi for the second. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, the question is, shall the ordinance be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Bud Matt. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, this ordinance is adopted. This brings us to line item B, ordinance number 22-05. It's to amend pay ranges for seasonal and intern positions for the city of Rolling Meadows. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? So moved. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Second. Thank you, Alderman Veneziano, for the second. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, the question is, shall the ordinance be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Budmatz. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, this ordinance is adopted. This brings us to line item C, ordinance number 22-06, to designate representatives to the Northwest Suburban Municipal Joint Action Water Agency for the City of Rolling Meadows. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Moved. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Is there a second? Thank you, Alderman Reyes, for the second. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, the question is, shall the ordinance be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Veneziano. Yes. Bassesi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Budmatz. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. We had seven in favor and none opposed. This ordinance is adopted. This brings us to the next item on the agenda, which are the consent ordinances in for first reading. This does consist of three items. Those items are D through F. Does any alderman wish to remove any of the items from the, con from the consent agenda for resolutions? Seeing none, the chair declares it in order for one motion to consider the ordinances in a single motion without debate. Is there such a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McHale. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the second. This begins with the first line item D, ordinance number 22-00. It's to approve an ordinance confirming and extending the state of emergency within the city of Rolling Meadows due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Line item E, ordinance number 22-00 at this time to grant approval of special use authorization and electric message sign and other relief necessary to accommodate the electric sign for Community Church of Rolling Meadows located at 2720 Kirchhoff Road. And line item F, 
ordinance number 22-00 to amend chapter 6 alcoholic beverages of the code of ordinances to create a class K liquor license and correct references related to video gaming. The question is, shall the three ordinances be moved forward for second reading? Will the clerk please call the roll? Bassassi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sunoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Matt. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, the ordinances will move forward for second reading. This brings us on to new business, and this is line item G, a motion to approve the payment of bills on warrant for January 25th, 2022. Is there a motion to approve <coughs> the warrant? <coughs> Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman Veneziano, for the second. Is there any discussion on the bills on warrant? Seeing none, the question is, shall the warrant be approved? Will the clerk please call the roll? Reyes. Yes. Sunoika. Yes. Mikhail. Yes. Bud Matt. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassessi. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, the warrant is approved. This brings us to consent resolutions, and this consists of two items. Those are items H and I. Does any alderman wish to remove any items from the consent agenda for resolutions? Seeing none, the chair declares in order for one motion to consider the two resolutions in a single motion without debate. Is there such a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman McHale. Second. Thank you, Alderman O'Brien, for the second. Then this brings us to the first line item H, resolution number 22-R-14. It's to appoint city representatives to the O'Hare Noise Compatibility Commission. And line item I, resolution number 22-R-15, to approve an intergovernmental agreement with the Village of Arlington Heights for the Wilkie Road resurfacing and multi-use path project for phase one engineering services. The question is, shall the two resolutions be adopted? Will the clerk please call the roll? Sonoika. Yes. McHale. Yes. Bud Matt. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Bassessi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. With seven in favor and none opposed, the resolutions are adopted. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> That brings the council on to other business and reports. I do not have any appointments to make this evening. However, I do have a proclamation, and this proclamation is for Miss Alice Fitzgerald turning 100 years old. God bless the, the youth <laughs> that she's been provided. So, 100 years old. Whereas Errol Alice Fitzgerald and her family purchased an original Kimball Hill home and moved to Rolling Meadows in 1955, and whereas Alice Fitzgerald had resided in her original house for the past 66 years, and whereas Alice has provided thousands of hours of volunteer efforts to several city departments, including the Public Works Department, the Police Department, and the City Administration, whereas Alice became knowledgeable in the city operations by participation in and graduation from the Public Works Department, Citizens Academy, the Police Department, Citizens Academy, and the Fire Department, Citizens Academy. Whereas Alice has served for over 10 years as a volunteer for Rolling Meadows Historical Society, including four years as its president. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Joe Gallo of the City of Rolling Meadows, do hereby proclaim Saturday, January 29th, 2022, as Alice Fitzgerald Day in the City of Rolling Meadows. The entire city council and I, on behalf of its citizens, its businesses, and its staff recognize Alice on her 100th birthday milestone and for her 66 years as an original resident of the city of Rolling Meadows and thank her for her extensive volunteerism and service to the city. Congratulations, Alice. This brings us on to the city's clerk report. Is there anything for the city clerk to report this evening? No, not tonight. Thank you. Then this will move us on to city staff reports. The first item on the city staff reports are the community items of interest. And for this, I will defer to Lori Cizak. Is Lori Cizak Rob available? Rob Sabo. Okay, so then I'm going to swing to manager Rob Sabo. Thank you, Mayor. A few items to note, um, only a few weeks remain to recycle holiday lights, extension cords, and power strips. Items can be dropped off in the collection boxes right outside of City Hall through February 4th. 
For more information on the program, visit elginrecycling.com. Um, with mixed emotions, we're, uh, regrettably, we're, can we're announcing that the city will be canceling two upcoming indoor events in February and March. The Taste, of the, Taste the Town event scheduled for February 26th and the St. Pat's Day Dinner scheduled for March 12th. These cancellations are due to the economic and staffing challenges that the restaurant industry is facing currently, and also uncertainties related to attendance in light of various COVID-related mandates which currently exist. We hope to bring these two events back in 2023. While we aren't holding our Taste of the Town event this year, we do encourage everyone to dine at, our, dine at or carry out from our Rolling Meadows restaurants, and we encourage everyone to fill up our restaurants and show them some Rolling Meadows love. Lastly, just a reminder that the Rolling Meadows Police Department continues to accept donations for the new Hope Fund to assist victims of disasters, domestic violence, child abuse, and other hardships. Donations to the Hope Fund can be made by visiting the GoFundMe page located at www.gofundme.com forward slash F forward slash RMPD dash hope dash fund. That's all the items for this evening. Thank you, Manager Sabo. Appreciate that. And this will bring <coughs> us to the second item of city staff reports, and that's the February 8th, 2022 City Council draft agenda. And for this, I'll swing it back to you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, included in tonight's agenda packet is the draft agenda for the February 8th City Council meeting. Uh, just a couple of quick highlights from that agenda. Again, this is a draft at this time. Uh, we will have a contract for phase two engineering for the Hicks Road bike path, um, as well as an agency agreement uh, for federal participation with IDOT for that path. Um, we're, uh, uh, there's a resolution approving uh, the Rebuild Illinois appropriations for road construction, uh, engineering services for the Kennedy Pond survey, and an easement for the 2200 Algonquin to accommodate a bike path improvements. And again, these are draft, the, the agenda is draft and will be posted uh, in advance of the meeting in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Manager Sabo. Um, at this time, this will bring us to matters not on the agenda. Are there matters not on this evening's agenda? Alderman Veneziano. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so in light of uh, current situation that happened uh, this last week in Ward 4 near the high school, I just want to remind residents that city staff and Rolling Meadows um, Police Department do not monitor community chatter. So if you do see something that is alarming or um, concerning that you do need to call and report them, um, luckily, we did have a few citizens um, that did view, uh, witness a potentially very dangerous situation and reached out to PD, um, but again, had those individuals not and just relied on community chatter, um, something terrible could have happened and, and it is being handled. Um, so in light of that, I, I do want to refer to Chief Nowacki just to share the information again with how to reach um, you know, PD and, and reporting any potential crimes or or anything that they see. Thank you, Alderman Veneziano. Chief. Chief? Yep. Uh, thank you, City Council. If uh, an individual witnesses any type of crime or dangerous situation, the best way to notify the police department is to dial 911. Also, if any time you need to speak with the police officer, have an officer come out to your residence, business, like I said, the proper procedure is just to dial 911. I know a lot of people feel uncomfortable about that. Uh, but the incident that happened last week was a traffic related uh, matter it, w it was could have been very dangerous and like i said we are uh, following up on that and we're hoping to conclude that uh, possibly by the end of this week and like i said for those individuals that did uh, uh speak with us uh, i thank them for that thank you chief are there any other matters not on this evening's agenda if not, then that'll bring us to the final portion of this evening's agenda, which is where I would like to entertain a motion to go into closed session under Section 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act based upon the finding that litigation against the city on a certain matter is probable or imminent and under Section 2C1 of the Open Meeting Act regarding personnel. This does require a motion and a roll call vote. Do I have that motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Veneziano. Do I have a second? Thank you, Alderman O'Brien. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion on entering into closed session, will the clerk please call the roll? McHale. Yes. Bud Matt. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Veneziano. Yes. Sassi. Yes. Reyes. Yes. Sonoika. Yes. 
With seven in favor and none opposed, we will now enter into closed session. The audience and press are advised that we do not anticipate taking any action upon returning to open session. So with that, I wish everybody a wonderful evening. Stay warm. It's cold out. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.